Welcome everybody, it's Tracy from Nova Scotia Living, and tonight we're making a roast beef dinner for supper. Uh, so I'm just going to start off quick um, and say um, what the ingredients are. And roast beef dinners can be made different ways, like whatever spices you like on your meat, you use. So just for tonight, because I've made it different ways, and we like it all different kinds of ways, but there's my guest uh, star over there, Mr. Mays. Say hi, Mays. Hi. Hi. But we'll just go a quick rundown. So I can all my, mostly all of our own uh, vegetables, or I get them from a farm market. But uh, yeah, some beans from our garden, some peas, some corn, and some carrots. And these vegetables are already cooked. All I have to be, all I have to do to these is just heat them up. If I had my wood stove going, I don't today because it's a beautiful day out. I could heat those right up on the fire, no big deal. I can cook the whole meal on there, really, but uh, n no worries. So, some potatoes. I'm using a turkey roaster just because I'm cooking two roast beefs. A uh, pot for your potatoes. Um, and I cut up two onions. We love onions. And I'm going to put these in the bottom of the roasting pan. I'll show you that when we put it together. And the spices I'm using today some garlic powder, some Montreal steak spice, a little bit of salt, not much because there's salt in this, some pepper, and some onion powder. I don't have any red wine vinegar. Sometimes I put a little bit of that in there. Um, sometimes I put soy sauce in there. I, sometimes I put like some beef broth in there, but I'm just using what I have. And um, yeah, I'll bring you back in just a minute. We're going to start prepping this meat. All right, I just want to show you guys what I did. I already prepped one roast beef, just so this video won't be too long. But I put both of the onions in the bottom. And I'm using this little rack because I have one. And I can easily take the meat out after and make the gravy at the end. But these onions are going to get super soft. And I mix them right into the gravy. They, they, they get super duper soft. So um, let's prep the other roast beef. And um, then we can get this cooking. Hi. No? Okay, girl, uh, guys. Guys and girls. So, I have my roast beef here. And since I'm using a turkey roaster, I can fit two. And for those that don't know, we have a big family. We have uh, six children. Sometimes we have more. Um, and we like our food. Now, this seems like a lot of food. With this much roast beef, this is going to make at least a couple of meals. I'm using... Oh, before I do that, what I always do, I always make little lines. I don't know if that's picking up, is it? Not deep, just on the surface. A little bit of Montreal steak spice. A little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of onion powder. pepper and just a little tiny bit of salt and I rub this in I'm, I have one hand for wet and one hand for dry right now I like to rub it into those creases so it gets in and now we're going to do this for the other side oh I'm forgetting I just find it uh, it helps get those spices and uh, down inside the meat. Montreal steak spice, onion powder, pepper, and just a tiny dash of salt. And we're going to rub that in. I'll use both hands now because I'm all done touching the spices. I get these little gloves, you guys, uh, on Amazon. You don't have to wear gloves. I just like to wear gloves. Uh, they're only eight, nine dollars a a box. So here's the roast beef, and there's Miss Misha. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little bit of a broth going on. I think I have some frozen. I'm gonna just warm it up, and we'll just put a tiny, tiny bit in the bottom. All right, I didn't have any beef broth, but I did have some beef bouillon, so that's what I'm going to use. And you don't have to use this, guys. You can just put a little water, 
Um, and if I had red wine vinegar or balsamic vinegar is great too. Misha, no. So I just whipped up a, a mason jar and I'm pouring it around the beef because I don't want to, um, well, I'm trying to. I don't want to wash those spices off. And you can make roast beefs and put, uh, put um, carrots in here and potatoes a little later on. I'm not going to do that because I already have my preserves ready right there. And, uh, but that's something you can do. And you can make this a one-pot um, dinner. So I'm going to put the cover on this. I'm going to put it in the oven. And it's only uh, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So I'm going to cook this on 350. Um, and I'm going to check it in an hour. I know it's not going to be done then, but we'll check it in an hour. In the meantime, I'm going to peel a pot of potatoes. Potatoes all done, rinsed. Now I'm just going to fill them up with some water and, uh, Put them on the stove. I'm not going to turn them on until about 4 o'clock. There. There we go. Alright guys, the buzzer just went off. Well, actually, I didn't have the buzzer setting, so I'm not going to lie to you. But it's been an hour and 10 minutes, and I'm going to take it out of the oven just so we can check, check on it. I know it's not done yet. It smells really good though. The whole kitchen downstairs at my house, you can smell roast beef. Oh, and I my, oops, I apologize guys. I forgot my little tripod upstairs. So, let's take a look. Yeah, it's starting to brown up a little bit. And uh, yeah, the onions I can tell are translucent, like they're nice and soft, but I'm going to let this go for another hour with the cover on it, because it's only, um, what time is it, 3.24, and we usually eat supper around 5 o'clock, so I'll take this out uh, about 20 after 4, and let it sit for the rest of the time, um, but at 4 o'clock, I'm going to turn these potatoes on, I'm going to add a little salt to the pot, and we'll boil those up, so I'll bring you back when it's that time. What's a roast beef dinner without some mustard pickles? And I have my pickles down in my basement. Well, let me see here. It's not very good lighting down here, but I'll get a big jar. Mustard pickles. All right, we're just opening the vegetables. And now we're just going to pour them in a bowl. We can heat these on the stove or heat them on the wood stove, but today we're just going to uh, heat them in the microwave, about three minutes a bowl. I just need to do the carrots and then, yeah, those will be ready. The roast beef is just about done. I'm going to take it out and we're going to look at it. And the potatoes are boiling now. All right, we're just going to take a look at it. Ooh, that's hot. Whoops. I would say this is done. I haven't even cut it open, but it's not too too brown but it's not uh, raw or anything like that so I'm gonna stick this back in the oven I'm gonna shut the oven off and the potatoes haven't quite started boiling yet they're getting up there I did put some salt in this water uh, and I'm gonna leave this in the oven for about another 15 minutes while the potatoes are boiling after 15 minutes I'm gonna take them out and then uh, we're gonna make some gravy Alright guys, the roast beef, or the potatoes are almost done, not quite, but almost. So I'm going to take the roaster out of the oven, and then I'm going to take the roast beef out of the tray. And I'm going to stick this back in the oven, and the oven's shut off. Actually, I should cover it, so I often just do that. So now we need to start making the gravy. 
here's the drippings. You can see the onions. So let me get the uh, flour and water ready and I'll show you what that looks like. All right guys, I was about to shake it up, but this is just, it's not quite halfway full of flour and the rest is just with cold water. I could add, add spices in this, but I already seasoned the meat and the broth and everything. So I found it's easier to do it in a jar and give it a good shake. There. So it's, it's good and thick. The camera's not going to pick it up until I, I show you uh, when I pour it out. And I make my gravy right in the roaster. I turn both of these burners on on high. And you can see it's starting to boil now. I know it's steamy. But I get a whisk. I'll see if I can get you set up a little better. Just a second. All right. It's starting to boil, so I'm going to, and when you add this, you need to keep stirring this because you don't want it to clump up too much. It's good and thick though right now. And when you make gravy, you can make gravy and thicken it with flour and water like I am. You can thicken it with a little bit of cornstarch and water. Whatever tickles your fancy. It's all good. So I'm going to let this come up to a boil. It's, it's kind of running still right now, but that flour is going to cook and it's going to thicken this up. It doesn't take very long. I was actually going to shut you off and bring you back, but it's already starting already. And this is just a turkey roaster, so it's not a thick bottom pot, so you, I've really got to keep stirring it. Yeah, it's thickening right up. I, I can't even stop. I'm going to turn this way down. And it'll still, because it's so hot, I'll see if I can bring you over without being too shaky. I try my darndest, but can you see that? That's thick. I could actually add a little water to that. I'm going to actually take it off the heat. i got to put you down a second. You've got to keep stirring this or it's going to scorch to the bottom when it thickens up. And you don't want a burnt gravy. You really don't. I just put a little more water in this jar. I can put that in. Oh, sugar. Good one, Tracy. I'm going to incorporate that in. Just to, I, I like thick gravy. I just don't want it super thick. I really am not a fan of really runny, runny gravy, watery gravy. No, that, that's just perfect now, just perfect. I'm going to shut the heat right off. I'm going to stir it for a few more, about another minute or so, just so I know it's not going to so much cook anymore, except just to keep it warm, because the burner's off. But can you see? It's nice and thick, but it's not pasty. And that's all flavor. That's all flavor. And some of those little onions that I cut smaller almost melt into this kind of a, a gravy. Especially when I'm whisking it, you know, it, it breaks it down. Oh, it's so good. It really is. So now that's about 10 minutes out. I'm going to start heating up those vegetables in the microwave. And then we're going to just show ourselves up a plate. So I'll bring you back when it's time to uh, sit down to eat. Okay, the potatoes are done. So I'm just gonna strain them. You can use a strainer if you want. I'm just doing it this way. Less dishes. I, I've been doing a lot of cleaning today and I don't need any more dishes. But if you do it this way, be very careful. All right, now, Now all I do, because I'm heating up the vegetables now, the gravy's all done, the meat's all done, I take a heavy dose, I'd say for a pot this size, three tablespoons of butter, maybe a little more, it all depends on um, 
the amount of potatoes you have. And like I said, I salted the water, so I'm not adding anything to this. I'm just going to put this cover back on and wait until all the vegetables are heated up, and then I'm going to mash this up and whip them a bit with my uh, hands. And um, yeah, then we'll be ready for a plate. I'm just mashing the potatoes. I put a little bit of milk and uh, a little bit of pepper. And I mash it, and then I try to whip it a bit with my potato masher. I know you can do it with a blender, or not a blender, a beater. But again, I'm not into the extra dishes. So I just go around and around fast, and go back the other way, and up and over, and up and over. And before you know it, you have whipped potatoes. There you go. All right, I have Mally here. She's going to help me. Uh, she's going to be my cameraman. So I like to use a... Keep, keep it on the plate so people can see. I like to use a ice cream scoop. I think it like... I don't know. It's just easier for portions. And it kind of looks fancy. There's the carrots and the peas, and the corn, and the beans, and the gravy, and the meat. So I'm going to stop you for now because I can't do it one-handed, but I'll bring you back with the final, um, final result. Don't forget about the side of pickles. All right, last but not least, we need to add a little gravy to this plate. I don't know where my scooper is. I never do. I swear I must have goblins or something in my house that take some of my stuff but this isn't going to be my plate if it's my plate I like gravy on everything vegetables the whole shebang but I just put it on the potatoes and meat for whoever and they can add more gravy if they want just do a little bit of pepper pepper makes it better and that's it so I just want to thank everybody for joining me today and this is how I make roast beef but I'll do what I do, you do what you do, but if you, you know, want to take anything from this, um, yeah, feel free to try it, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'd love to hear from you. Please write me at novascotialiving at gmail.com, and peace, love, and happiness.